We are I. Who am I? Where am I? What am I doing here? What's the purpose? You know, what's my definition? Do I have clarity in who I am and what I want? You know, these are questions that I ask myself all the time. And, you know, it's not necessarily from a place where of like judgment or casting stones or not really knowing exactly the answers to them or, you know, furthering, you know, having a quest to be able to answer them more or in greater detail but i just happen to be fortunate enough to be in so many different situations in life that offer me like the gift of solitude you know and through this solitude i've really you know started to ask myself some pretty serious questions about you know who i am and you know like what am i doing here and like like what is my purpose and like what do i even really want to achieve the one thing that i've really started to understand now about myself and you know, when it comes to the initial process of reflection, that I have different, very different, vastly different thoughts about myself, opinions about myself, or questions about myself, depending on where I am. You know, like, whether I'm sitting in a sauna, or cryo chamber, an ice bath, you know, in the back country, you know, at the beach, looking out at the ocean, driving in the car, or simply just at home in my bed. You know, all these places inspire totally different, you know, questions about who I am. But the base of all of it is, is I've offered myself this gift of solitude to be able to help figure all these things out. You know, because there's not just this one clear path. You know, I'm a forever evolving person and so are you. You know, I don't want to be the same yesterday as I am today or today versus tomorrow. You know, this is all a part of like continued growth, but the the one thing that I've really started to understand and really challenge myself on is how often am I off on a on a path that's just completely in the wrong direction? How often am I on, on a path that I know at the beginning I just really shouldn't be walking down this path and I know there's not a whole lot of real value and I try to convince myself there's value to this path, but I know there's not. Because there's just so many paths. There's there's so much information out there. There's there's so many lines. There's so many roads. There's so many cars. There's so many buses. There's so many trains. There's so many gondolas. There's so many places to get places. And there's so many ways to be able to express. And there's so many avenues to create. And like all these things can be great. And we are of people of the type of species that needs these things. But do we need thousands of these things? Because the one thing that I really like after having some real serious conversations with like people who are just absolute value to my life. Like the, the one thing I realized is that if I'm 36 years old and I'm just having a bitch of a time figuring all this stuff out most of the time, how on earth do we expect our children when they're teenagers or when they're like, you know, preteens or you know even younger than that like we look at them and we look at these these battles and these issues that they're facing and they're fighting and you know we don't figure it out we can't figure it out how many times have you come across something on social media where somebody's posted something about like oh i have to parent today or like parenting is hard or oh it's monday i have to adult again Yeah, like these are all like real things, but these are all like the basis of like us struggling to be able to figure these things out. You know, we live in this world and in this culture in Western society where, you know, we just overvalue, you know, like independence and extroverted personalities. And, you know, you have to be this way to be able to achieve. And this is where success lies. And, you know, like this is your avenue. This is the path. This is the formula to be able to get there. You know, but the one thing is that like if I can't follow this formula, how in, on earth can I expect my children to follow this formula? And when has there ever been a formula to be able to get into any destination anywhere in life at any time? But the one formula is, is that you just wake up and you have the tools to be able to like explore life. 
but we're not even allowed to really explore life anymore because if we explore life outside of the definition of how to be able to explore life, this becomes wrong. This becomes like outside of what society's expectation is of how you get from point A to point B. But you know what? The one thing that, that I have the most comfort in now, and the, actually the one thing that I probably value the most about myself is the zigzag path to be able to get there. And I think that's why, like, you know, like discovering, like, you know, Ayurvedic medicine and ancient Chinese medicine and Taoism and all these things and, and realizing that, like, a lot of this process is simply just affording ourselves as individuals, which allows society and other people in our communities the chance of exploration for themselves, the chance of just trying to be able to like figure themselves out and figure out a point E to point B in any zigzaggy path that goes up and down, left and right, back and forward with a blindfold on, on your knees, crawling across your back. Like sometimes we just need this. Sometimes that is the value of getting there is just simply trying to figure it out because I know the more that I'm put inside this box, the more that I try to convince myself that there's this one singular path or there's this one formula and the more I listen to other people and realize that they're not successfully living their lives in this singular path and singular destination and you know that's how that you should achieve success in your life. These are all things that people describe to me, the things that they can't stand about life and these are the things that make it the toughest parts of their lives and I remember being challenged with this for the first time of you know really breaking outside this mold like one of my really good friends and still to this day you know really successful guy you business wise and you know like has done very well for himself and in the middle of the day midweek you know I was talking to him on the phone I'm like hey man I'm like what are you doing he's like you know what he's like I'm just gonna grab my skateboard and go to the skate park and I was like what I'm like man I'm like we're in our late 20s it's in the middle of the work week. Like you're a successful businessman. I'm like, and you're going to hop on your skateboard and go to the skate park? I just didn't get it. I didn't understand it. You know, but like now I look back and I'm just like, wow. You know, like this is like he's been breaking the mold and just refusing to be able to live down a singular path and a singular formula to be able to get there his entire life. And I'm like, how absolutely incredible is that? These people have been laying these, these concepts in front of me through the entire course of my life. I just was not willing to be able to see it. But the one thing that I do, the more that I look around, the more that I listen, the more that I hear, and the more that I see that, that all the situations that are going on in life and the struggle our kids are having with and like the struggles all the other adults I know are having with, with their children and themselves – it's this, this clear definition, like this line, this path, this avenue that has no right turns or left turns. It has no peaks and no valleys. It's this, this blind path that you can walk on, this formula for how to be able to get somewhere in life. You know, but what if I don't want that? Like, what if I don't want that? What if that's not where my happiness lies? What if that's not where anybody's happiness lies? Like, what if there's an entire world outside of that? You know, and this is like the one of the concepts of Taoism that like as soon as I heard it, I was just immediately connected with it, you know, and doing an, an incredible injustice to what it actually says. But the foundation of it being, you know, just that if the path can be clearly defined, it's not worth taking. And I look at that the more my path is undefined when when I wake up in a day and my day is just my day. I love that. But the more that I know that I have this meeting, that meeting, and you know, like this, and all these different million things going on, and my schedule is booked for a week and a month, and there's just no room to be able to breathe in it, like that's not happiness. And I live, I know we live in a world where there's like responsibilities, and we all have to work, and we have kids, and we have obligations, and yeah, that's totally fine. You know, but the one thing is, is like we are we are absolutely entrenched in this bubble in Western culture thinking that like the entire rest of the world lives this way. And like the more that I talk to people on this podcast and the more that I listen to people who've been at places in the world and develop concepts and mentalities and philosophies on their lives, I just realize that like 
there's nobody that I know that really is happy that has an absolute clearly defined path. Some of the, the happiest people I know have this undefined path. And even the people who look and have the appearance that they have the most defined, like some of these high profile business guys that I know. But the one thing that I look at is like they have the, the most unclear path out of everybody. They're entrepreneurs. There's no clear path in sight ever at all at any time, constantly forging new ground. You know, so where I thought I seen all these representations of people living these clear paths, like it's really not. You know, so why are we all, you know, like why don't we just allow ourselves the freedom to be able to explore life? You know, because these are the things that we need with inside of ourselves. Like these are the things we need inside of our communities and our families and our societies where we just, we have the opportunity. You know, and a big, the biggest injustice we see to like our children is, you know, saying that, yeah, you've graduated from grade 12. Now figure out what you're going to do for the rest of your life. You know, why not tell them some real information and tell them that, you know, most people who are successful have changed occupations two, three, four, five times to be able to get to something they figure out that they like. Why not tell them the truth? You know, why not just allow people to kind of stumble for a little bit to be able to figure it out? Because everybody learns by their mistakes. Everybody learns by, you know, understanding like paths they should and shouldn't go down and, you know, an understanding of like what is good and what is not to them. And, you know, maybe what we should do is just stop telling other people what is right for them and what is wrong for them. You know, because the one thing that I know and I look at like my children and I absolutely know that what is right for me is not right for them. And I have one of my three children, when I look at her, I'm just like, yeah, you know, like you might lean a little bit more towards, you know, like how I live life. I I can see it a little bit in you, you know, you're a little bit more like higher energy, like, you know, you get after like, like I can see some similarities, but I also see incredible differences. You know, and these are the things that I look at them and I'm just like, you know what, just go, just like, like get out there. You know, like, yes, school is important. Yes, foundational things are important. Like, yes, but you know what? You know what also is a value? It's just getting out in the world and seeing that a world actually exists outside of these four walls, outside of these walls of our community, outside of the walls of our province and outside the walls of, you know, our country and our philosophy and our, our ways of life and, you know, how we decide to be able to navigate every single day. There is an entire world and out in that entire world, there are hundreds, if not thousands, if arguably not hundreds of thousands of other ways to be able to live your life. And you know what, if you go explore them, you will connect with one of them. And you know what the result will be is you'll be happy. You know, because like when you look around it, when I look around it and I see like, you know, like all these children, these children now are byproducts of us, you know, and we look at and we question why this generation is so lost and they have, you know, no ambition and like these questions and that questions like, you know, we are the ones who set these children up. Like we are the ones who have raised these children, you know, whether in your the mid to late thirties, like me or in your forties or, you know, like we have built these children like this, this is a byproduct of what we have done. These children have not woke up and decided to be able to walk down this path because they've chose that we've told them that this is the way to be able to go. You know, and if I want to afford myself the opportunity to be able to grow simply by learning and studying and understanding what I like and what I don't like, like, how can I tell my child That they need to be able to do this because this will make them happy. You need to walk through these steps. You need to jump through these hoops. You need to go down this singular path because this is what we deem to be right. This is the path we deem to be the righteous one to be able to take. But who am I? Who am I? Who am I the right to be able to tell this child that that is the path for them? When I look at me and I say, me as an adult, me as 36, you do not have the right to be able to tell me what my path is. I will forge my path. I will find my path. I will understand that. Give me the gift. Honor me with the gift of exploration. Give me that gift. Do not take it away from me. Offer me that gift. I will offer you that gift. Find who you are. Find those things that you want to be able to connect with that make you whole as a human being. Change jobs every six months or three years. Change the way that you eat and how you eat and how you work out and how you live your life and the movies that you go to and the music that you listen to and the clothes that you wear and the car that you drive. Because that's life. 
If we have all of these options and we realize having some options is what connects us with being healthy and whole and an understanding of who we are, then why do we get in a singular lane and not get out of it? Why do we walk a singular system of living our lives and saying, this is what will make me happy Although I'm not happy today, if I perfect this path, if I keep walking down this path, I will get to a point where I will be happy. Because if you would have told me two years ago, if you had told me five years ago, if you would have told me 10 years ago that I'd be sitting here today airing out my life, my emotional life, my physical life, the representation of my life on a podcast, I would have said there's absolutely no way. And on top of that, if you would have told me that I would have just valued the most having like hours long conversations with people and their story and just being infused with who they are as a person to figure out who I am, I would have said no way. If you would have said that I would be studying, you know, Ayurvedic medicine and ancient Chinese medicine and Taoism and all of these different holistic ways of living life, I would have said maybe I could see that, but I can't define that to you. But you know what I can tell you today is I'm doing all of those things. Which leads me to believe in probably two years from now, in five years from now, in 10 years from now, I probably might not be doing any of this. And you know what? I want to be at such a point of peace in that. I want to feel a sense of comfort in that. I want to know that that is where my happiness lies. That is where I'm going to be my most peaceful is just understanding that I am always going to be different because I always have been different. And I haven't been different just living the same singular life. I've been different because I'm on the constant quest because there's so much. There is so much that I can connect with. There is so much that is going to offer value to me. And this is one of the biggest reasons why I've never wanted to be Christian or Catholic or Hindu or Sikh or Buddhist or one singular thing. Because what an absolute injustice to say that this one way is the only way and the only righteous way to be able to live my life and define my life by this singular avenue. No, because you know what? That will also mean that like every other aspect of life, what if I would say something as just as egregious as saying that I should only surround myself with people who are white? That would be just as disgusting as saying that I'm going to only focus on one singular avenue of my life and only think there's value in that singular component. There's not. There's not. There's not one aspect of my life where I can sit there and I can see there's only value to this singular component. And I look back at the way that I've been subtly telling this to people for so long where it's like, yes, I'm non-denominational and I'm proud of that, but I have Tons of friends who are Sikh, Hindu, Christian, Catholic, Muslim, Buddhist, non-denominational. Because you know what? They are amazing fucking human beings. I don't just lift weights, nor do I encourage people to. Because I love biking. I love rowing. I love hiking. I love running. I love lifting weights. I love playing squash. I love all of these things. And they're all of value. I don't just eat beef because I like fish. I like chicken. I like buffalo. I like all these things. Because they're all of benefit. I don't just eat cucumbers because I like bell peppers. I like carrots and I like potatoes and I like cauliflower. You know, like all of these things. They're all options because there's value in them all. And this, these are the things that Ayurvedic medicine and ancient Chinese medicine have taught me is that there is so much value in everything. But there's no wholehearted value in one thing. So why are you, why am I, why are we convincing ourselves that there's these avenues in life that we can hop on, we can get in our proverbial car, drive down this proverbial lane and say, this is where I'm going to get to my proverbial happiness. But this is why I find that this, these, these connections, these philosophies, it's like, no, there's not just this benefit to one place in life because life might exist more than just this physical presence that I'm in. No, there's not just this value to one plant or a species of plant or a region of plants. There's benefits to them all. There's not a benefit to being outside on only sunny days. There's not benefit to being, you know, like with a certain group of people because there's value in absolutely everything. So why do we 
And more importantly, if you actually connect with that to any degree, why are we trying to convince our children that there's still these singular avenues if we have not learned anything yet? When will we? And how are we going to teach our children to teach their children that there's more than one avenue, there's more than one path? If we are hyper teaching them that there is only one, but you know what? There's not. Find the value in exploration. Find the value in getting out there and just living your life and understanding that there's just, there's possibilities, there's value. You know, understand hate to value love. Understand the value of rain to appreciate the sun and the flower that comes along with it. Understand the value of just being around people who authentically have just found something that they love, no matter what it is, even if it is not yours. One of my a most amazing friends that I have in this life is a devout Christian. The one thing that neither one of us do when we're together is challenge each other's belief system. Because he has the right to be able to choose that and I honor and I respect that. Because he honors and he respects my way of thinking and we both find value in the air that comes out of each one of our mouths. And I want to continue to be able to operate. I want to continue to say like, hey, you know, like I hope that you're doing that too. I hope for me, I'm playing catch up to all of you. I hope that all of you have been doing this for a lifetime and you're sitting here listening to this right now and saying, Blake, about time that you've caught up to this. We've all been living life like this and you've been in the stone ages. Well, thank you. And if that is the case, thank you. Thank you for affording me the opportunity to be able to catch up because I'm here now. You know, but like that's the one thing that I want to be able to look at around in my life is saying like, how can I give more people the opportunity to be able to do that? And you know, and this is the reason why we are I. Let's all explore There's not a singular component to this podcast, and I never really thought that there was a singular avenue to it or there there ever was going to be. This is the reason why that I bring so much diversity onto this podcast is to say like, hey, look, the underlying root behind all of this, the absolute entrenched manifestation of this podcast and its concept is that there's people out there who are just absolutely passionate about the way that they live their lives every single day because they have just made a choice to be able to say, this is how I'm going to live my life. And no matter how strange it may be to you or to I that they're doing that, they have this absolute gift that they're sharing with the world. And I hope that we all can just look at it and take it in and say, this is a gift. This is a gift for us. This is a gift for us to receive because you are living your life every day that when you open your mouth and the air starts coming out and you start talking about this thing that you are passionate about, I see it. I see it in the way that you smile. I see it the way that look in your eyes. I see the way that you look off into space when you're talking about it. I see it in the energy of your body and like, ooh, I just want to be a part of that. But then how can I offer those opportunities to other people in my life and the people in my community if I'm not living like that? I can't. And the only way that I know how to be able to find that in the common denominator of like what these people and how they've got there is they've just allowed themselves exploration and they continue to allow themselves exploration because they've just made a choice. They've made a fundamental choice to stop the singular pursuit. They've made the choice to be able to stop driving in only one lane. They've made the choice to be able to stop the singular association because they find value. How can I devalue you as a human being by saying that there's no benefit of you to my life because you don't think the same way that I do? I don't want to think like that. I try my hardest not to think like that. I try my hardest because I've been conditioned in my life in preceding years to think that if people don't think how I think that there should be something wrong with that. And I feel like that a lot of that has to do with because of how I was raised where it's we have these singular pursuits, whatever it may be. 
you know, and these are the molds that like we just, we need to break not for ourselves. We need to break these for like the generations to be able to come because if we have all this technology and we have these means to be able to explore the earth and every single component in it, we need to offer those tools. We need to offer those tools for our children to go out there and just be able to understand. You know, some of the best philosophers, the philosophers that we all live our lives by to some varying degree, the one thing that I've learned about almost all of them is that they've been on pursuits. When they develop these philosophies that we all have adopted to some degree, no matter what the face of your philosophy is or your philosophical code may be, every single one of these people was on a pursuit to be able to understand why they think the way that they think and to be able to clarify that for themselves to help offer clarity to other people. So we can't just blindly follow that. Why would we blindly follow this singular pursuit, this one narrative, this one context when those people didn't even do that to get there? They didn't. No matter who you decide to be able to live and mold your life like as a base, as a root, as a concept, to whatever degree or percentage that you live your life by like that, every single one of those people were on a journey. They're on a quest. There's some component of their life that was, you know, an enhancement in their life and an inspiring moment that changed things for them. But when was the last time that us in our lives afforded us and ourselves the opportunity enough time where we had this inspiring moment, this inspirational moment that from that day forward changed the course of our lives. When was that? When have you done that? Have you ever offered yourself that opportunity? Have you ever offered yourself that gift? How many people do you know in your life that have offered themselves that gift so that you can receive that concept and that opportunity to know that there's validity to exploring that. Because that's what it is. That is how you are going to define yourself. And the best part about that is the absolute best part of that moment is when you get there and you have that moment, you will understand at that exact moment that there will be more moments like that because you will continue to offer yourself the gift of growing, the gift of fluidity, the gift of just allowing yourself opportunity to be able to expand and to be able to learn and to be able to understand how much is out there for us and how there is not one lane. So give yourself the gift of exploration. I have given myself the gift of exploration and this podcast is a window. This podcast is a portal to my gift to myself of exploration. And I hope, my sincere hope to every single person who listens to this podcast, that you are, or if you aren't, please start. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to everybody around you to give yourself the gift of exploration so that you have that moment of inspiration that will fundamentally, from then on, change the course of your life. And if you think that you know and you connect with what happiness means inside of you, you don't know yet. You may think you know, but you don't because once you truly understand, and I'm getting there, and I think that I know but the one best part is as much as I think that I can slowly start to clarify what that's going to be, I find great sobriety in knowing that I actually have no idea. No idea.